Hi, welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. It's Melbourne, it's summer, the Australian Open tennis is on. It's 40 degrees in the shade at about 9 o'clock at night. What better than to study some economics? So let's look at the economics of a subsidy. A subsidy is just a negative tax. That means that the price that buyers pay is going to be less than the price that sellers receive. The gap is going to be given by the subsidy. More formally, the price that buyers pay is going to be equal to the price that sellers receive less the subsidy. We're going to look at the example of a subsidy on gymnasium memberships. So for example, the subsidy might be, say, $100 per membership per year. That means that if the seller receives or charges a total price of, say, $1,000 for a gym membership, that means that buyers are only going to pay $1,000 less the subsidy. The price that buyers pay is going to be, say, $900 for a gym membership over the year in our example. How do buyers only pay $900 but sellers receive $1,000? Well, the government is going to pay the difference, the $100. So you can imagine that when you go in to pay your gym membership for the year, there's a person from the government there. The gym owner says to you, you want to join for a year? That's $1,000. You go to pay $1,000, but the person from the government says, well, hang on a second. You only have to pay $900. I'll kick in $100 for you. Now, as with our tax, it doesn't matter who formally receives the subsidy. Either the government person could hand you $100 and then you hand $1,000 to the person who owns the gym, or you could hand $900 to the gym owner and the government could hand the $100 directly to the gym owner. It doesn't matter. The key factor is that the price the seller receives is more than the price the buyer pays by the size of the subsidy. What is the effect of a subsidy on our equilibrium? Well, here we've got our market for gym memberships without a subsidy. On the horizontal axis, we have the quantity of gym memberships. On the vertical axis, we have the price of gym memberships in dollars per membership. We have a supply curve and we have a demand curve. The equilibrium in the absence of a subsidy will be where supply and demand intersect at a price of P dollars and a quantity of Q dollars. Given the price P dollars, buyers would like to buy Q naught memberships. Given the price of P dollars, sellers would like to sell Q naught memberships. They coincide, so we've got an equilibrium. Now let's see the effect of a subsidy. Under a subsidy, the price that sellers receive is above the price that buyers pay. It's above the price buyers pay by exactly the size of a subsidy, S. So this gap between P1S and P1B must be exactly the size of the subsidy. Now, how do we get our quantity? Well, we're looking for a price that sellers receive so that they'll be willing to supply exactly the same amount as the amount that buyers want to buy at the price that buyers pay. Or in other words, we can think of the subsidy as putting a wedge between our supply and demand curves. But unlike a tax, where the wedge kept the price to buyers above the price to sellers, for a subsidy, the wedge creates the price to sellers above the price to buyers. So the wedge comes into our diagram from the right-hand side. It creates a seller price up here if it's above the buyer price by exactly the size of the subsidy. Let's check that that's an equilibrium. Given the price that sellers receive, sellers, well, by the supply curve, they would like to supply Q1 memberships. Given the price that buyers pay, buyers would like to buy, well, given by the demand curve, Q1 memberships. So our sellers' plans and our buyers' plans coincide. So that's an equilibrium with our seller's price exactly above our buyer's price by our subsidy.
We could find our equilibrium by using construction lines. Our construction line here is the pink line, which is the supply curve minus the subsidy. Or in other words, we've created the pink line by taking the supply curve and moving it down at every quantity by exactly the size of the subsidy, S dollars. That construction line, where that construction line hits our demand curve, that gives us the price that buyers pay after the subsidy. Given that price, that tells us the equilibrium quantity. Back from that quantity to the supply curve, that tells us the price that sellers receive with the subsidy. Alternatively, we can use this construction line here. This construction line in blue is just our demand curve plus the subsidy. In other words, we've constructed our new dotted line by shifting the demand curve up by exactly the size of the subsidy for every quantity. Given our construction line, D plus subsidy, where that construction line intersects the supply curve, that will give us the price that sellers receive in equilibrium with the subsidy, back to the supply curve, come down to the equilibrium quantity, back up to the demand curve, that tells us the price that buyers pay with the subsidy. Now again, I don't care which approach you use to work out the new equilibrium under the subsidy. I prefer to use the wedge approach because I personally find it easier to pop a wedge between supply and demand. But if you prefer to use the construction lines or if your lecturer insists that you use the construction line approach, please feel free to use that. Remember, only use one construction line. Don't try and use both of them at the same time. We can look at the amount that the subsidy costs the government. Remember, the government is now paying out the subsidy. How much does the government pay out in total? Well, it pays an amount S, that height, on every gym membership. How many gym memberships are there? Well, Q1 gym memberships when the subsidy is in place. So the size of a subsidy, S, times Q1 gives us the amount the government pays, which is the size of the red rectangle. We can divide that rectangle into two bits, so I'll call the top bit area A and the bottom bit area B. And if we think about area A, well that's the amount of the subsidy that goes to sellers. Sellers get a higher price after the subsidy, their price has gone from P0 up to P1S, so they get that higher price times the amount they sell. So area A, which is the entire rectangle here, is the amount of a subsidy that accrues or goes to sellers. Similarly, buyers pay a lower price once the subsidy is in place. So we can think of area B as representing the lower price to buyers, that height between P0 and P1B times the quantity that buyers buy with the subsidy, that area B is the amount of the subsidy that goes to buyers. So the subsidy tends to increase the price that sellers receive. It reduces the price that buyers pay. Notice that it increases the quantity transacted. So the subsidy will encourage more gym memberships than there were in the absence of the subsidy. And the subsidy costs the government the red rectangle, which can be divided into area A, that goes to sellers, and area B that goes to buyers. As before, the amount that goes to sellers compared to the amount that goes to buyers will depend on the relative elasticity of supply and demand. You should try and draw this diagram for different elasticities of supply and demand just to see how the incidence or the benefits of the subsidy change depending on the elasticity of supply and demand. You can do that in your own time. That's enough on subsidies for now. Thanks for listening.